How could you change our breathing patterns to influence the amount of oxygen uptake in the blood? To activate the body's relaxation response. Very small things that you can do when we're looking at breathing. One is, when we're taking a breath, whether it's during rest or whether it's during physical exercise, there's a benefit to slowing down breathing. There's a benefit to not taking so many breaths per minute. And the reason being is because every breath that you take into your nose or through your mouth, not all of that air will actually reach the small air sacs for gas exchange to take place. Of every breath that you take, 150 ml of air remains in dead space. So say for example, if you're breathing 12 breaths per minute, and if the size of each breath is half a litre, that gives you an entire minute ventilation of 6 litres. So 12 by 500 ml is 6 litres. Now we're concerned with how much of that air is actually getting into the small air sacs. We have to subtract dead space. So we have 12 multiplied by 500 ml, which is the size of the breath coming into the body, subtract the dead space, which is the amount of air that remains in dead space, and that gives us the amount of air that's actually reaching the small air sacs. So in our example, it's 12 by 350 ml, and that gives us a minute ventilation of 4.2 liters. Now, if I slow down the breathing rate from 12 breaths per minute to six breaths per minute, and if I allow the size of each breath to increase proportionately, and when I subtract dead space, you will see that the, the amount of air that's reaching the air, small air sacs in the lungs within one minute is now 5.1 litres. So just by slowing down the respiratory rate, we can increase our breathing efficiency that we're getting about 20% more oxygen getting to the small air sacs in the lungs. And that's just changing the rate and the number of breaths per minute. Let's look at another aspect of it. How do you breathe using your diaphragm? Many people talk about the benefits of deep breathing. What does a deep breath mean? If you were to look at an English dictionary and you were looking for a definition of deep, you would see that the definition of deep is far from the top. So in terms of breathing, deep breathing is basically using our diaphragm. And when the body needs to take in a breath, the brain, the respiratory center in the brain, sends a message via the phrenic nerve the phrenic nerve is connected to the diaphragm and the diaphragm moves down about one to two centimeters during rest and as the diaphragm moves downwards and as the lower intercostal muscles move out this increases the volume of the thorax which in turn reduces the pressure inside the chest and that's why we have an inhalation and after we've taken our inhalation diaphragm then move back up to the resting position, the intercostal muscles move back in again, and we have our exhalation. So diaphragmatic breathing is pertinent to good breathing, but how can we learn and help to restore diaphragmatic breathing? And the reason that I speak about this is because we were generally born breathing through our nose using our diaphragm. As children, we were breathing primarily using the diaphragm during rest. And often as adults, and especially if we're prone to asthma, if we're prone to anxiety, if we're prone to panic disorder, we don't tend to use our diaphragm as effectively. Very often our breathing is fast and it's upper chest, but fast and upper chest breathing is terribly inefficient and is gonna keep us in that fight or flight response. So restoring diaphragmatic breathing the foundation to it is to breathe through the nose. The nose is connected with the diaphragm. The mouth is connected with the upper chest. We will never restore diaphragmatic breathing if we continue breathing through an open mouth. Now I know there's many modalities to talk about restoring diaphragmatic breathing, but there's very little attention on breathing through the nose. In my view, it's not possible to effectively restore diaphragmatic breathing as a normal breathing pattern without switching to nasal breathing. And when I'm talking about nasal breathing, I'm talking about nasal breathing during rest, I'm talking about nasal breathing during physical exercise, and I'm talking about nasal breathing during sleep. What are the benefits of diaphragmatic breathing? And what are the benefits of breathing through the nose and diaphragmatic breathing? Well, the human being, we're generally sitting upright or we're standing, we're walking, etc. 
and with gravity the greatest concentration of blood is in the lower regions of the lungs. But if we're breathing through an open mouth, we're generally ventilating the upper regions of the lungs. When we breathe through the nose, there's a greater tendency to take the air deeper into the deeper regions of the lungs. But also when we breathe through the nose, we pick up a gas called nitric oxide. And nitric oxide is as carried with the breath through the nose, down the throat, into the airways. Nitric oxide will help to redistribute the blood throughout the lungs. So nose breathing brings the air deeper and nose breathing with nitric oxide redistributes the blood throughout the lungs. Now the ratio of air meeting blood has improved and this increases the pressure of oxygen uptake in the blood. This was discovered back in 1988, even before nitric oxide in the nose um, was discovered. That was first discovered in 1991. But researchers Swift, they noted with patients who were forced to continuously breathe through their nose as a result of jaw surgery, that the pressure of oxygen in the blood increased by 10%. Nasal breathing automatically improves oxygen uptake in the blood. Nasal breathing helps and assists with a better gas exchange to take place. If you want to improve oxygen uptake in the blood, breathe through your nose.